Uh, Congressman, I know it's your time to say I told you so, but have at it. Well, BP in the first week was saying it was only 1,000 barrels per day, and then in the second week, well, the range might be 1,000 to uh, 12 or 14,000 barrels, but it's now clear um, that it was uh, 62,000 barrels per day uh, at the beginning, uh, and that uh, it was upwards of 53,000 barrels per day um, for most of uh, the duration of this uh, catastrophe, and by lowballing the number in the beginning. Uh, they basically were saying, we can take care of this, it's not that big. There would have been a much larger effort to have all hands on deck, to have every technology available to protect the Gulf of Mexico to shut off this spill if BP had been honest from the very beginning. And they've certainly undercut the credibility of the private sector in any future spill because now there will have to be an immediate national response rather than taking them at face value. Let me get to the issue of the dispersants. You've written a letter uh, that has been widely quoted in the last couple of days that BP often carpet bombed the ocean with these chemicals and the Coast Guard allowed them to do it after we discovered how toxic these chemicals really are. They had no business being spread across the Gulf in this manner. And the Gulf Guard really the, uh, rather the Coast Guard ignored the warnings, according to your information, and ignored what the EPA had actually set down as the standard. Well, there was a determination made at the end of May that uh, corrects it. This uh, dispersant uh, was dangerous if humans were exposed to it, um, that it was a danger to marine life in the Gulf of Mexico. And it wasn't as effective as underwater um, uh, dispersants being used. And so what the EPA and Coast Guard said to BP is that this chemical should be used only on rare occasions. That's the end of May. But over the next 48 days, uh, it was used 74 times uh, in the Gulf of Mexico on the surface. That is not rare by any definition of that word. Uh, and in fact, we now will have to do a, a much closer examination of what the repercussion, re repercussions are. What, what are the uh, results of this kind of scientific ex experiment with the Gulf of Mexico taking place? This is what that Allen had to say. Admiral Allen uh, just yesterday responded to these charges. There are times when maybe not everybody agreed on what we should do, but the fact of the matter is uh, folks are managing these uh, conditions on scene tactically and have to make decisions without complete information, sometimes under conditions of uncertainty. Is that a good enough excuse? Uh, to me, no, it's not. Uh, when the EPA uh, and the Coast Guard agree that it is dangerous to use these chemicals uh, and that they should be used only rarely, I don't think the discretion should be left to the local commander of any one boat to decide that they're just going to spray these chemicals into the Gulf of Mexico. I think that they should have had to have come back and to have received explicit a permission for any one of these decisions. It turns out that not only were they given uh, blanket waivers in many instances, that is BP, but they were given it retroactively when they had exceeded the amount that they had been given permission uh, to use. Uh, and again, they were given that almost as a rubber stamp. Now, uh, Mike Pence from Indiana uh, was on Morning Joe this morning and talked about the moratorium. I wanted to play for you what he had to say about the administration's approach to this moratorium on offshore drilling. Frankly, the uh, Obama administration's moratorium on drilling uh, is, uh, is killing jobs in this region. We'll meet this morning uh, with uh, Professor John Mason, who produced a, a comprehensive study that said that in the, in the Gulf of Mexico at large, there's more than 8,000 jobs that will be lost in the six months just directly related to the moratorium on drilling. I don't think it can be justified any longer. Do you think that it should be reconsidered, the offshore drilling uh, moratorium, because of the jobs and the economic impact on the community? Well, we had a reconsideration of it on the House floor on Friday evening. Uh, it was a vote on uh, Congressman uh, Charlie Melanson of Louisiana's amendment uh, to uh, our oil bill, uh, our safety bill. And that amendment said that these rigs 
can go back into operation as soon as uh, they pass the test of a safety inspection. So the test would not be a six-month um, uh, moratorium. Uh, it would be when they are determined to be safe uh, and they have been tested to make sure that they are. So that's the right balance. Put safety first, not put a deadline on it. If they can be determined to be safe in one month or six weeks, let them go back to work. Every single Republican leader voted against that amendment on the House floor. They would rather have the issue than have a solution to the issue, uh, which is what Congressman Melanson presented to the Congress.